When I look back at my student experience, there are so many things that I wish I would have done better. And yes, it's too late for me now, but it's not too late for you. So in this video, we'll break down each of the points so that hopefully you can apply them and do better than me. My name is Jun Yu. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I just recently graduated with both my bachelor's and master's in biomedical engineering. So I think this provides me a unique perspective to talk on the topic. Me and my friends right now, we are benefiting from the things that we did well, but we're also experiencing the ramifications of the things that we didn't do so well. So if you have any questions at all, leave your comments below, give this video a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe. With that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Number one, be clear on your purpose. Often as students, we are told what to do without ever thinking about why we're actually doing that. And I actually believe this builds a really unhealthy relationship with school because there are moments where we will question this, right? especially in challenging situations like having a ton of exams, a ton of deadlines, and feeling behind and feeling this pressure and overwhelm, we will ask the question of why is this even important? Why am I learning Pythagorean theorem when I don't need to apply that in my real life? I empathize with you, I understand that experience, but the truth of the matter is, as students, you're going to spend a majority of your time in school. So let's build a healthy relationship. And I think that starts with having the right type of purpose defined. There are career paths that require a high GPA. For example, if you're going to med school, yes, you need a high GPA for your undergrad, but often a lot of career paths don't require that. And we often get blinded to think that actually chasing perfect grades is the most important thing, when in reality that probably takes us away from actual other important things that we should be focusing on. I can use my experience for this. Example, my bachelor's and master's in biomedical engineering, those degrees I wanted, but I didn't necessarily want to pursue a higher degree. And I didn't even need to disclose my GPA often when I was looking for industrial jobs, right? I had that understanding, but I still had this obsession over the best grades possible, right? In the sense of chasing after perfection when in reality I was sacrificing depth of learning and I was also sacrificing some other important aspects. So when it got to about year three, I had to ask myself the question, why am I doing this? Like, why am I here? If I'm going to graduate soon, I wanna be able to say that I took something away from it. And we know that school is very expensive, so we wanna be sure that our time is best used. And for me, the answer then became, I wanna build as many opportunities for myself post-college. I wanna be able to do the thing that I love and I enjoy and I have fun with while still getting paid for it. I wanted that freedom. And therefore, my perspective changed because then I started to realize there were other high impact actions or other priorities that actually led me to that goal. And then things definitely became more enjoyable for me. And so that's what I would encourage of you. I will be talking through some other points, but I thought that this was so important to address first. Your purpose in school needs to be something that you think about often so that you can take actions, again, that feel a little bit more relevant and it doesn't feel like this hateful relationship with school. Number two, study smarter, not harder. Often when you're younger, you can get away with the numbers game trap, which is spending more time with your work and expecting a better result in association, almost like this linear behavior where, let's say I spent 10 hours on studying for an exam, then I should expect a better grade than if I studied five hours. But we know that especially as your classes get harder and you have more of them simultaneously, this is a very dangerous trap to fall into because there's no way that you can just continuously increase the amount of time per class. Instead, you need to use high utility techniques or techniques that are gonna let you get the most bang out of your buck. This is where important principles like active recall, space repetition, and are leaving and chunking, et cetera. These become so extremely important for us to have integrated across our learning system. I even wrote a book about the learning system. I talk about the learning system often because no matter what age you're in, whether you are a student or you're outside of school, you're always going to have to learn. And if you can have a system to help you be efficient with that process, it just does so much wonder in terms of making learning fun. Like you realize, yeah, actually this isn't this horrible experience. I can do this and I have confidence in it, but at the same time, it could be a pretty quick process as well. Right now in this position that you're in, I bet you never even thought that studying is a skill or learning is a skill. You probably just thought that some people are smarter than others. And yes, I think that often you have natural talents, but when you can have evidence-based techniques, it becomes like the greatest equalizing factor. And that's how you can get more of your time back. So I really encourage you to spend a little bit of time each day like learning about 
how am I supposed to learn? Like, I wouldn't go and try to immediately implement a bunch of new techniques at once, but start small and start to realize the benefits of those. And I think it will change your perspective on how studying can be done. Number three, focus on high value skills. And this applies both in the classroom and outside of it as well. In the classroom, as a biomedical engineer, I was exposed to a variety of different skills. It might have to do with research or the design engineering process or software encoding or different medical testing or medical instruments or medical devices in general, right? There were a lot of different involvements of skills that I was exposed to. And often in my first few years, I was so focused on getting the right grades that I didn't even think about the actual application of the techniques. I know that sounds crazy, but if you're a student, you probably experienced that, right? Where you're so focused on, okay, I just need to memorize these questions, but you lack the understanding of how to actually apply that technique. And I'm telling you, that was something that I wish I had done better um, because those individuals that could focus on the skills, when it came down to interviews, when it came down to writing resumes, when it came down to you know, getting the first jobs out of college, those were a lot of the things that they could speak to in depth. And this isn't to say that you have to learn every little skill that you're exposed to in the classroom setting at great depths. No, absolutely not. But some of the ones that are aligned to maybe a future position that you wanna have, spend some time to really concentrate in class about it and not just like how to get a good grade because that will pay dividends in the future, but also outside of the classroom as well. This is something I'm really proud of myself doing where I didn't get complacent with just learning biomedical engineering. I wanted to learn a high value skill for a long period of time that could potentially help me leverage into a different industry. So for me, that became personal branding, content creation. I fell into this as a freshman and I have posted every single day since. And now it has built so many opportunities for me to make an impact and to feel aligned with my values and my purpose as I do my business now. And I think that that was such an incredible blessing that I'm so happy that God has given me. But in that, I think it's important to develop those high value skills outside of the classroom too, because that along with the high value skills you learn in the classroom setting, that's gonna do exactly what we talked about in the purpose, build so many opportunities that you're gonna have the freedom of choice after graduating. Number four, start your own project. And I think that this actually makes things fun, right? And this I'm putting right after the prior point because of the fact that it has direct correlation. When I'm talking about high value skills, the best way that you're gonna learn it is through application. It's not to only study it, right? It's to actually get practice, hands-on experience. I actually say that the best way that you can learn something is literally do a project and when you run into the issue, look up online and then fix it yourself. That's like the best way to learn a lot of the cases when it becomes more nuanced of um, the teaching material. And therefore, I think having your own project can be a really fun way of doing this. And this is something that made my friends do because I like almost forced them to do it because I found so much great enjoyment and I told them, just do whatever project. I don't care what it is. My friends that love coding, I was like, do something, build an app and we can work on something and we can have fun with it and I can help you build it. And I just want you to get in the experience of doing it because you're gonna learn the things that you like and you don't like, but you're also gonna learn so many nuanced skills that you can put on your resume that you can go ahead and talk about in interviews and it shows great initiative on your end and so I know a lot of people love to you know try to find an escape out of school because school can be so overwhelming and emotionally exhausting and I understand that but for me personally I found it to be really enjoyable to continue developing my skill sets but just in a more fun way in a way that was more in my control and I found that these separate projects helped so when I was doing content creation I treated that like a separate project. I was like, my personal brand is my project. I'm gonna work my tail off on it. I have no idea what I'm doing and I don't know if this is gonna work out, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. I'm gonna post every day and I learned so much. I learned so much about business. I learned so much about organic marketing. I learned so much about funnels. I learned so much about developing products. I learned so much about feedback. I learned so much about design iterations. Like I've learned so much about those things based on this decision to create a project that had no money associated with any anything, but it was just me to have fun with it. And I think that's really one of our best ways to learn. So find a project, anything that sounds interesting to you, just do it for an extended period of time, connect with people that are doing similar things. And I promise you it'll be so well worth it.
Number five, get professional experience. This is another way to build out your resume. So I love personal projects because it's in your control. It's fun to be a part of, and you have so much dictation on how it goes in the process, but also you want professional experience to improve your resume, but not just that, it shows you what you like and you don't like for a particular job. Because there's only so much that a job description will entail. But when I was doing my six month internships, my nine month projects, for me, I start to realize, yeah, actually there are some nuances that I don't like about this job that I had no idea about. But there are some things that I really loved and I would never have known that if I didn't actually have the professional experience. So it's so good for your resume building, it's so good for your networking, but it's also really good to best define what it is that you want so that you're not in this position where coming out of college, you're like begging for this one job. You're like, oh, I really wish, I'm gonna be so happy when I have this job. Like this is all the work that I've put in the last four or five years of my education to get this job. And you get, you're like, I hate it. Like this is the worst thing ever. Um, I don't wanna be here. And it happens often because people don't tend to value internships or professional experience. And I also know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, oh, June, I don't have anything on my resume right now, how am I supposed to get a good internship? One, work for free sometimes, um, or two, get involved with like university related projects because as a university, you're more likely to try and help your own students, right? So if there's research projects involved, there's, if there's different clubs and projects that they're taking on, get a part of these. So you have something to put on your resume and that could be the foundation of your resume. And as you get more professional experience, you can continue to build upon it. So I think professional experience is extremely valuable. It tells you what, the experience is actually going to be like, and therefore you know how to cultivate a clearer path to get to a position that you actually enjoy. Number six, focus on your communication skills. I really do mean this, learn to interact with people in a way that is productive, right? I know a lot of times when you're in these group projects, you hate them because you're the one doing the work and nobody else is, but this goes back to point number one, like understanding your purpose. Yes, is it important for you to get a good grade on that? Sure. But also, is it really important for you to learn how to manage those situations? Yes, absolutely. Because you're always going to be working with people in the future in some capacity. And the better you can be at learning how to manage those relationships, the better you are in terms of promotions, the better off you are in terms of scaling your business, the better you are in terms of leading a team. It is so essential that you learn how to talk to people, right? In a way that makes them feel seen and appreciated and respected. Don't be the person that's constantly asking asking other people for things. No, learn how to provide value. Learn how to be a value-led individual and build relationships that way. And then learn how to actually maintain these relationships. And I'm telling you, that is all networking is. People will say like network, 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 and it sounds like this really complicated thing, but really it's just about learning how to be a good person in relationships, right? Friendships, that means in colleague relationships, that means in individuals like your professors and your TAs that you can contact. And I know that this is hard and it can be really uncomfortable, but I promise you it gets easier over time. So I actually challenge you in this moment to go and reach out to somebody that's a classmate of yours or somebody that you might've worked with in the prior and just start to have a conversation with them, talk about what they're up to, talk about how they're doing and make people feel good, make people feel seen. And I promise you as you build that type of connection, those connections Connections last more than a grade on a piece of paper, right? The grades are important, but if you can develop the right types of relationships, these could be business partners in the future, right? These could be huge referrals in the future. With that being said, that wraps up the six points that I want to cover that I would have done a better job of if I went back into my student experience. So I hope that this can help. Leave any questions below in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe. Until next time, I hope that you guys take care of yourselves. I love you guys so much and I'll see you all at the top. Thank you.